Hi, I'm going to set up the Mead LX 200 8 inch telescope here at Carleton College and one of their piers. Now, there are six piers in total. I'm going to be using the smallest one, um, but they all vary in height, so select one that most matches with your height. Now, the first thing you want to do is to make sure you have all the things you need. You're going to need the actual telescope box itself and make sure to note which number it is. You'll also need the corresponding telescope accessory box, and that also has a number on it to make sure those match. And you're also going to need the Telrad box, so make sure you have that number as well. After you've removed the cover, you're going to want to do a wasp check by checking underneath the pier to make sure that no wasps have made this area their home. The next step is to get the telescope ready to be mounted to the pier. So we're going to open up the telescope box. Inside of the telescope, you'll find the actual telescope with its base. You'll find the finder scope. And ideally, you should also find the telescope cover and should be on. Uh, so you're going to remove that, keep it on the side. Once you've removed the telescope cover, you should notice that the base is kind of pointed toward the side and the right ascension lock is facing to the right. That means it's unlocked. So what we're going to do, and if it's not unlocked, make sure to turn it to the right to, to make it unlocked. And you're going to want to rotate the base from its current position up toward you. And then you're going to want to lock the right ascension lock. Next is the declination lock, which you'll find on the right side of the fork. You should be able to turn it clockwise in order to lock it, and it'll give you resistance once it's locked so you'll know. We'll also need the screws that are going to go into the telescope base that attaches to the mount, and you'll find those three screws inside of the telescope accessory box. So I'm going to get that now. And within here, once we open it up, You'll find the three screws that look like this. I'll get a little closer. There you go. And then we can put the telescope accessory box to the side for now. Now, actually putting the telescope on the pier uh, is best suited for two people, but it is possible to do it by yourself. Make sure you're very careful. What I like to do is to put the first two screws kind of preceded uh, inside of the, the pier where they go. And then the third screw is going to go on the base. So what we're going to do is we're going to lift the telescope, bring it forward, and kind of hang it off of the edge of the case. That way we can screw in this bottom screw to the bottom. You don't want to screw it in all the way because you're going to need to slide it into the top. Uh, but you do want to screw it in so that it doesn't fall out. The next step is to actually lift the telescope, bring it up to the pier, and slide it on and then screw in the bottom two screws. Make sure to lift with your legs and not with your back and then be very careful and always keep at least one hand on the telescope at all times. Now with the telescope securely mounted on the pier, we're going to need to attach the finder scope and then the telrad. So the finder scope, you'll find it within the telescope box that you got. You can't miss it. And what we're going to do is we're going to screw in this dovetail bottom into the top of the telescope, sliding backwards in. I'm going to unlock the declination lock, bring it more toward a usable angle, and then lock it. And you'll find two screws here that you can use to tighten in the finder scope once you've slid it in. After that, we're going to attach the Telrad. So I'm going to grab that box right now. So here I have the Telrad box. I'm going to open this up. And it's upside down. That's okay. Put the box away. You see the Telrad has these feet down here. These are going to slide into the top of the telescope and you'll find that there are two screws on the left side and you'll use those to clamp this down. Our next step is to attach our eyepiece to the back of the telescope. 
So I'm gonna grab those pieces from the accessory box right now. Now, depending on what it is you'll be looking at for the night, you may or may not need this right angle adapter. And what this does is it just makes it easier to look through the eyepiece for the telescope. So instead of having to look down here, you can look down like this. Now this telescope in particular, number 24, has a focusing motor for the CCD cameras. We're not gonna be using this for visual astronomy, but because of that, we're gonna need this adapter that steps down the size. So your first step is to slide this in with the screw inside of that hole and clamp it down. And from there, we'll be able to attach our right angle adapter. And then you're going to want to uncover the eyepiece, take it out, recover this. Put this back in the telescope, accessory box, and slide the eyepiece down and clamp it down. And now the telescope is ready to align. Now aligning is very important because it allows you to use your telrad or your finder scope to find the general area of where it is you'll be looking. So that way you don't have to look using your eyepiece and makes things a lot easier. So in order to align, Normally what I do is I point at a corner spot of Olin or Evie Hall, and I make sure that the center of the finder scope, the center of the telrad, and the center of the telescope are all pointing at that same corner. So I'm gonna use the telescope to find that corner first. Right here, the eyepiece is a little bit of an awkward angle for when I move it up. So I'm gonna rotate it a little bit to the left. I'm gonna unlock the declination lock and then unlock the right ascension lock. And so now I have the telescope pointing at a corner of the Evi building, and I'm gonna use the finder scope and the screws on the side to align it with that same corner. And now the finder scope is aligned, so I'm gonna move on to the telrad. There's a dial on the right here that you can turn, you can use to turn on. Now it has a varying intensity, so at nighttime, if it's too bright, you can turn it back to lower that. It's currently very bright right now, so I, I can't see the light, so I can't align it. Um, but you would use these three dials in the back in order to move that light and to center it with the telescope. And now that your telescope, finder scope, and telrad are all aligned, you're ready to start your night of observing. I hope this video helped, and make sure to watch the other videos that will show you how to power on the telescope how to align the telescope, and how to attach the CCD camera to the telescope. Thank you.